Is Amazon Rings of Power Season 2 a game changer or just more of the same? Let's talk on Rings of Power if it's worth the hype or a totally squandered and missed opportunity. The trailers for Rings of Power season two have dropped and they are everywhere. Tons of views and they are making waves, if not ripples. But does it look better or is it just more of the glitter on a problematic series? Season one of Rings of Power faced mixed reviews. It did get like a 6.9 on IMDb, but with its huge budget and ambitious goals, it struggled to meet fan expectations, let's see if season two can turn things around. So far, we've seen Sauron, trolls, orcs, horse battles. That's pretty fucking cool. But be honest with me, is the gray wizard Gandalf or something new? Jump back a thousand years before The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings with The Rings of Power. The show takes us to a time when Middle Earth was mostly peaceful mostly peaceful, and explores huge events like the creation of the powerful rings, the rise of the villain Sauron, the epic downfall of the island kingdom Numenor, and the big alliance between elves and men. All right, look, while Tolkien's work in the original series covered the events over a long stretch, the series packs it all into a costly, costly TV show. There are so many comments on the trailers and a decent view count. Many fans are hopeful, saying that the trailers look a thousand times better than season one did, and we had others agreeing, noting the improvement in the visuals. It does, at a surface level, feel like the season is flushed out a bit more. On the other hand, many comments criticizing how Gladrail seems overly confident about identifying Sauron, despite her past mistakes, and I've read some that point out how the show's attempt to downplay certain characters and themes, but I'll get into that in just a second. Fans like me are eager to see more of Sauron. Focusing on Sauron is a smart move, given that, you know, they don't really have anything else to talk about. It's a significant role in the Tolkien's lore, as a part of the reason the first season was so costly is it included the purchasing of the rights. I do have to warn that Sauron's presence might actually be more about deceiving the audience than enriching the story but only time will tell. Some viewers, I'm talking about mostly me, are cautiously optimistic while hoping to remain impressed at the same time around a lot of viewers find the trailers promising. Now, it's important to note that as of August 2024, The Rings of Power has already set a huge record with its budget. Season one cost $465 million. I mean, come on, that's a lot. And season two is set to break records of $700 million. That's a massive investment on an IP, which like I said before, includes the price of Amazon paid for the rights for J.R.R. Tolkien's estate. With the total budget expected to top 1 billion, it's shaping up to be the most expensive TV show series ever. Produced by Amazon Studios, this show takes us over a thousand years before the events of Lord of the Rings films. And according to the Wall Street Journal, nearly a third of the first season budget went straight to securing those rights. Isn't that fucking crazy? Now look, despite my issues with season one, my love for Tolkien's world keeps me hopeful. This is a story that was a desire to create a national mythology and was similar to other European countries. It's important to remember because here's why I think season two might be a turning point. From the new battles to hopefully deeper character arcs, hopefully deeper character arcs, season two promises a lot. Now, back to talking how some of those characters are being downplayed. In recent years, it's a phenomenon we see a lot and uh, it's uh, been a trend of storytelling where villains are portrayed as misunderstood and relatable rather than just villains. So you have good and bad and so they go, it's good and then kind of good. And this shift adds complexity to the characters, but sometimes blur the lines between good and evil. Look at characters like Loki or even Thanos in the Marvel Universe and how they're portrayed. They often receive a sympathetic backstory that redefines them as really a tragic figure rather than pure villains, which sometimes we just should have. In Rings of Power, there's a similar trend. Sauron, traditionally a clear-cut villain, ultimate evil, is presented with much more nuance. This could be intriguing, but it risks making him less menacing and more relatable. Are we seeing Sauron become a misunderstood hero of sorts? In my opinion, for the rings of power to truly shine, this is what I'm hoping for. All I want is a faithful adaptation. Stay true to the Tolkien's rich lore and capture that essence of the Middle Earth. Maybe we don't need every single political ideology shoved down our throats. Next is to focus on strong storytelling. Focus on the compelling narratives that actually gets us to watch this in the first place. Well-developed characters get the watch time. High production quality is my third, and this is just maintain the stunning visuals. Keep the battles. Keep the immersive world building going. This one's a little bit, you know, it's washed, but engaging plot 
balance the action with meaningful character arcs and plot twists. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not asking for fan respect. I haven't bought all the stuff because I want kudos. Honor the legacy of the original films. That's what I'm saying. Bring in some fresh stuff, exciting elements, and stop calling everyone racist when they don't like an entirely new character that really didn't exist in the first place. I've read a lot of comments about the diversity in the characters. It's important to remember this world was built in an era before representation was an issue. As a writer of his time, Tolkien focused primarily on a white audience of England and he drew example from the mythology for his dwarves, who resemble Vikings. And just a quick editor's note, it's important to say that the actors are not representing the changes in the overall story of the world. It's important to remember as well that we, at least me, like less political, less craziness. We just want to dive into a world and watch it, so make it easy for us. Now, we might be way, way past this option, but it's, again, a TV show, who cares? It's fun to watch, whatever. If you don't like it, don't watch it. But if you're keen on introducing more diverse characters, a respectful way to do it in this world would be create a new, distinct character from a different region, rather than altering the established ones. This approach could add depth while staying true to the original lore, and then you kind of win on both sides. But now I'm gonna throw it back to you. What's your take on the trailers? Are you gonna watch season two? Are you interested in it? Are you excited for the changes? Or are you holding your breath? Hopefully not for too long. Share your thoughts in the comments below. And we just had a blast.